All right, joined now by uh, Noah Dobson, not just a one, but a two-time Memorial Cup champion. For the purposes of this interview, though, we're going to focus on 2018, the 100th anniversary of the Memorial Cup. The Acadie Bathurst Teton, for the first time in franchise history, wins the Cup. Noah Dobson, a huge part of that. Uh, when you go back and, and look at your career, where does uh, 2018 and the win with Acadie Bathurst rank in your list of accomplishments? Yeah, no, I think obviously it's, it's near the top. I think uh, having the first opportunity to to win a championship in the in the Quebec League and then go on to the Memorial Cup where being such a small junior American in Bathurst, I mean, you really never really pictured yourself being there. And then to have the opportunity to, to win the Memorial Cup and be my draft year and all that too, is a, is a special year and just having family connections to Bathurst and winning a championship there and bringing it back there was also special. So it's a it's definitely near the top for sure. Yeah, that's one part I wanted to touch on. You were in a unique situation in that your grandparents were, were from the area. And so you were able to experience it both from an insider as a player, obviously, but to really get a sense of what the town felt about it. Just explain that connection a little bit and, and how much your grandparents uh, meant to you and your time there. Yeah, no, I think Bathurst was, uh, both my parents grew up and went to high school in Bathurst and then obviously moved to the island where I was born. But uh Still got lots of family ties there. Uh, my Both my grandfather and grandmother on my dad's side lived there, and then my grandmother on my mom's side lived there as well. So just to, to play junior hockey there and have them in all the games was something really special, and I think uh, it was special for them as well. They, they didn't get to see me lots growing up to traveling all over the place, playing hockey, and I wasn't able to get to Bathurst as much as I would have liked, but just having the opportunity to live with my, my grandparents as my, my bill is something special, and I was fortunate to have family connections to the, the town I was playing in and not many junior hockey guys get to have that experience so I was really grateful for that and it's uh, just special to have them in the stands every night knowing you have family watching you. Yeah such a such a cool thing what an unbelievable experience but uh, if you go back to your time um, in, in Bathurst what challenges did it present playing there maybe in terms of, of travel and, and being a smaller market what, what did you find were some of the challenges that you uh, personally and maybe as a group had to overcome uh, in that season especially yeah I think well even just going through the draft process I mean not a lot of not a lot of guys have Bathurst on their on list of teams they want to go to I mean it's starting to change now after what we were able to do I think really helped them uh, the last couple of years to get guys to to report there and stuff but I think just being such a small town I mean there's your your basically your teammates or your friends in and out of the rank and just involved in the, in the high school there. It's just so small and just the, obviously the, the, t it's a tough draw for fans with such a small community on, on any given night. I, was, I mean, looking at my first, my first year, it was, uh, it was tough. But then as we, we had a good, pretty good playoff run when second round uh, game seven. So we kind of drew, drew some attention there. And then I think the next year just took off from there. I mean, our, our second half the year we won, I think like pretty well, close to all the games were packed every night in the arena and then obviously the playoff run. And when we were able to win the championship on, on home ice and see the building packed and how loud it was, it was pretty cool just to see the difference from day one when you play your first game there with maybe a thousand people in the stands to 35 to 3,800 people just packed in there. And I know the whole, the whole community was really behind us and that really helped us when we got to Regina knowing we had so much support back home. That's one of the cool things because you're so embedded into the community in the small place. And I can think of several other markets. You ran into one in Swift Current, but we'll talk about that a little bit. Oftentimes what we see is that a team that um, wins a championship has so much trouble regenerating that passion, that energy, and then going to the Memorial Cup and getting back up to that level in order to win another championship. How was it that this group was able to kind of, okay, we're really happy with the President Cup, now we're going to the Memorial Cup and really get back to that top level. It didn't take you guys very long, maybe not quite the first game you expected, but still able to win on Liam Murphy's overtime winner uh, on opening night. Yeah, no, I think a lot of that was kind of our, our Sylvain Couturier, the, the manager, and then obviously Mario played a big part in that. I think uh, we, we enjoyed ourselves after we won. Obviously, we had one or two days off, and we really enjoyed the celebrations. And, and then we got back to the rink the next day, and it was kind of Mario was like, the celebration's over. It's kind of back to work now. And you, you win one championship, and that's great. But obviously, when you have the opportunity to play in the World Cup, you, you have that in the back of your head. And that's obviously the main goal as a junior hockey player to, 
to win the ultimate prize in the CHL. So I think when we when we stepped on that plane, we, we were kind of all business. And I think a lot of that came from Mario's just uh, leadership in that way and making sure we were ready. And I mean, the first game, I think we kind of went into, we didn't really know what to expect. And then once we were able to see that we can win at this level and in that tournament to win the first one, I think from there, we were just like, it's game on, it's anyone's tournament. And that really, I think, dialed us in and we kind of turned it on from there. Yeah, it was on the second night of the tournament, the opening night for your club, a 4-3 win uh, over over Swift Current. But one name that you brought up there, and you did so a couple of times, seems to be that unique bond between Mario Pouliot, who went on the year after to Rouen Noranda, and then brought you along for a ride and another Memorial Cup win. But what is it about the relationship that you and Mario uh, worked so well and allowed you to have the type of success that you had to be drafted so high and then obviously make the jump to the National Hockey League uh, a year after your win with Ruan Miranda? Yeah, I think just, I think trust was a big thing. I mean, he uh, he believed in me from day one. I mean, coming as a 16-year-old, it's it's a tough, tough league to play. And as a 16-year-old, as a D-man, I think uh, early on, he, he was really tough on me. I mean, I wasn't getting lots of minutes and I was a lot of extra work at the end of practice. And then I think what really turned was uh, the playoffs that year. He gave me the opportunity to, to match up against uh, Pierre Luc Dubois in the second round. So I think that really just showed the the confidence and trust he had in me. Obviously, the first couple of months of the season were tough. You're kind of adjusting, and, and he was pretty hard on me. But I think uh, that having that opportunity in playoffs really gave me the confidence, and we just kind of built our relationship off that. And the trust going into the next year and the draft year, I know he helped me a lot with uh, just managing all the expectations and, and pressure and trying not to pay too much attention to the draft rankings and all that other stuff going on. But uh, he was obviously, he's a big part of my development. And he really helped me get to where I am today. And he, he was the main reason. I mean, without him and Ruan, I probably wouldn't have uh, been a place I would have agreed to go to. And I think he was a big part of that and really happy I made that decision as well. It was really cool from a media perspective to, to deal with him because sometimes you run into that language barrier thing and maybe coaches aren't as comfortable dealing with the likes, uh, likes of English speaking media. And I thought he was absolutely brilliant for us. Oftentimes he had to be dragged away in, in our conversations, you know, after the morning skate and, and whatnot. Uh, but one thing that I was really fascinated in watching you guys practice is that he'd often, he really seemed to have a good way with his players. And he'd often go around during practices and meet individually with a guy here and a guy there. And it might not necessarily have been Noah Dobson, but it might have been a Liam Murphy or maybe someone not as heralded, a Justine Ducharme, whatever the case might be. Um, that personal touch and the ability to really get a sense for what each indiv individual player needs um, really is something that we looked at as a very um, positive aspect of Mario's coaching. Did you have that experience, Will? Yeah, no, I think for sure. I mean, he, he's obviously, he's tough and practices are tough and you're going to put in the work, but at the same thing, he's, he's not the coach where you're not going to have a relationship. He has a relationship with all his guys. And I think, uh, I think with players, just as a young guy going through it, I mean, if you, you're, you're able to put in the work and you, you put in a lot of work and practice and stuff, and, and that's all fine. If you're able to go and have a conversation with a coach and you feel comfortable doing that. And I think that's the main thing. It's just, feeling comfortable to have that relationship and go if, if something's on your mind uh, not to be afraid or to speak up I and mean, you can have that conversation with them so he was uh he was really good with that I mean with with both groups of teams I could tell when I first got to Rouen last year that he had uh, he, was, he was only there for half a season when I got there and he already had a really good relationships with a lot of the guys and I think that's a uh, that's a big part of your team chemistry and the guys just willing to show up to the rink every day and put in the work and they feel, they feel trust in the coach and the coach trusts as the players as well. Yeah. Really, really cool to watch that. I want to bring it back to the Memorial cup. Now we talked about that, um, the, the first game win against Swift current, and then you guys go up against Regina. What was a kind of a crazy game that looked uh, really to be a, a, in well in hand for Acadie Bathurst and then a late push by Regina. But one thing that RJ Broadhead, my, my partner and Rob Falls, that we talk about is the empty net goal and just how important it was. I want to take you back to that time. So just to explain to some of the people who may not have been familiar, uh, situation, I think you guys were up 6-3. Regina battles back. It's a 7-6 game. They have the goalie out. You kind of step up in what looked to be a bit of a risky play and end up scoring the empty netter to make it 8-6. And as a result of that, Acadie Bathurst was able to move straight into the final, which was a huge thing based on goal differential and that sort of thing. But it turned out to really be a, a key part of you guys being able to win. Were you mindful of the situation 
And when it happened, there was a little bit of risk involved to you stepping up to make that play. Take us through that scenario and maybe describe what was going through your head uh, in what turned out to be a real tournament changing moment. Yeah, no, it's kind of the, looking back at it, it was kind of a weird situation. I mean, going into the games, knowing it's a, it's a short tournament like that and, and one team gets a bye, I, I kind of knew in the back of my head, just as a kid, I remember my, my coach, old coach, Rodney MacArthur, was so into like the plus minus goals against and all that. So we were always aware of that and just having that in the back of my head. And I, I, I thought there was few seconds left on the clock like not much time and the puck kind of went out of the blue and I mean I probably could have just left it and nothing would have happened but I was kind of just kind of my instinct to go and try and make the empty net I mean uh, one goal game and a two uh, difference between a two goal games a big difference in a in a tournament like that and I even remember getting back to the dressing room after the game and having a the boys give me a hard time because I think I had I had, th- I had three points already that night and the boys were all like, oh, you're hungry for your cookies. Get that fourth point. So I was like, boys, like, we're in a tournament here. Just wait. Like, you're going to see, like, plus minus goals against. And fair enough. I mean, once we, we – all the mathematical equations, we, we got the buy. They're like, yeah, yeah, I guess we won't give you a hard time anymore. But uh, just little things like that and it's such a quick tournament turned out to be a, a big thing. And same thing with not pulling our goalie versus Hamilton's. Same thing, I mean. I remember the media kind of like, well, like, what's he doing? Like, why isn't he pulling his goalie? But I mean, the whole time it's, it's smarter when you're in a tournament like that. And, and those one goals can be a big difference. And obviously it was a big difference for us in the end. Yeah. So the, that game that you're referring to again, for some people who might've been unfamiliar, uh, was a three, two game. Um, and, and it was inconsequential necessarily. I mean, after the two goal differential and you scoring the empty netter, um, but there was a chance to go ahead and win and really cement your spot without having to lean on the mathematics. And Mario Pouliot and obviously the team went in with the game plan that if we get into this one goal situation, we're going to maintain that one goal differential and hope that we're able to get over the hump. And that's exactly what happened. So the goalie wasn't pulled. It was a 3-2 loss to Hamilton. And as a result, with the mathematics, you guys end up going straight into the final. Um, and now in that final, you get to, to play Regina again. And boy, oh boy, I went back and watched the, the, the first 30 minutes, the first ball 35 minutes of that game that's about as clean a game as I've seen in terms of breakouts breaking up plays and neutralize transitioning back the other way tons of chances out shooting the opponent so on and so forth you guys were really dialed in there um what what is it that al- allowed you to kind of get so dialed in at that point yeah I, I actually just watched the game too uh, probably when it was played on the CHL website I kind of tuned in it was nice to see but uh I think at first we were kind of like, like, what are we going to do? I think we had five or six days. Like we finished uh, the new we were in on Tuesday playing in the finals and the finals Sunday night. So I think we had a good preparation in the sense where we had a couple of practices and we took a day off where we kind of went around and just trying to find things to do in Regina. We, we visited the RCMP, uh, laser tag, the mall and all that stuff. And then I think once, once Friday night hit, we, we all got in the room and watched the semifinal game. And then once we woke up Saturday morning, it was kind of, we flipped the switch and it was all business. And I think we had, we had a good practice that day. And I think just, uh, we did a good job limiting the distractions. I mean, in a, a big media tournament like that, you can get on Twitter and you kind of get lost and you, you get lots of distractions that way, but we were, we were focused and, I think just limiting the distractions and we had a good game plan going in and just lots of time to prepare going in with the right mindset really allowed us to kind of take over that game early. One guy that impressed me so much in the course of that tournament was your captain, Jeffrey Truchon VL. I mean, this guy was dialed in. I'm sure he wasn't playing at hundred percent health, but he uh, had so many ways in which he could impact the game, either with his strength and physical play, the ability to score goals, decent playmakers. Well, winning face-offs, PK power play, he was really an all-around guy that the world really didn't know anything about until this tournament. How big a part did he play as the captain in leading your group and keeping you guys dialed in? Yeah, no, he's, uh, he was such a big part of our team. And I think looking back at my first year, I just blowing the 3 nothing lead in the second round of Blainville, I think he was really one of the guys that uh, – had that bitter taste in his mouth and really, really helped him the next year. He wanted to, to lead this team. He knew we were capable of doing something special. And I think he, he really led the charge. I mean, looking back at that tournament, I think that line of him, Maslan, uh, I think it was Murphy. I think they scored a good chunk of our goals and they were, they were really dominant. I mean, watching, I mean, 
Jeff's a, Jeff's a guy when I look over the other side, he's a guy that I don't really want to be going back in the corner with and he's <laughs> in on me. I mean, he's, uh, he's got that physical pre- press, uh, presence and he also has that ability to, to make plays and create offense. So he was, a, he was a huge part of our team. He was our leader and he kind of led the charge and guys would follow. Yeah, amazing, amazing stuff. Another guy you brought up there was Samuel Aslan, who played the perfect, excuse me, but pain in the ass in that tournament. He was under everybody's skin. He scored in every game in the tournament. Really, really effective player for you guys there. Uh, Talk about his impact on on the group and what he was like in the room, because maybe what we saw on the ice might have been different from what he was in the room. I'll, I'll let you handle that. Yeah, no, I mean, I know firsthand what a pain he can be dealing with them all, <laughs> all last May in Halifax. But, uh, yeah, no, he's, uh, I mean, off the ice, he's, uh, he's an unbelievable guy. It's, like, hilarious. I mean, I remember when he first got traded at Bathurst, we, uh, we got into it in Shawinigan uh, when he was in Shawinigan. I, it was just me and him in the dressing room. And he, first thing he said to me is, like, yo, you're a little sh-. like, blah, 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 like, like and then that was just set the tone for the set the tone for the whole year. We think we had a really good relationship after that. But uh, he's a great guy in the room. Then obviously on the ice, he he knows it. He knows the role. He's really good at playing that role, and and he can make plays too. He can he can talk the talk, and then he can perform and deliver as well. But he's a he's a pesky guy to play against, and a real pain in your side when you're when the other team for sure. I guess the last thing that I want to talk about, I mean, it was the 100th uh, anniversary of this prestigious tournament. Um, when you look back upon it, and yes, you won again a year later with Ryan Miranda, but that's got to hold a little bit of extra special uh, meaning or a place in your heart because it was the 100th. Is that fair to say? Yeah, no, for sure. I think just the whole uh, the whole setup in Regina being the 100th, I mean, it was uh, really cool. I think we got a we got a couple of cool like monuments from with the hundred uh hundred Memorial Cup logo and stuff that I think was really cool stuff. I mean, if you look back at all the history of the tournament and the videos leading up to the tournament, just the hype videos and showing all the history. I mean, it's really cool to be a part of and to to have your name on the cup for the the hundredth time is uh, really special and something I'm going to remember forever. Awesome. Well, a real class act um, that I just want to let people know about. Acadie Bathurst was the first to present Jacob Wasserman, who was a, a goalie, unfortunately injured in the Humboldt Broncos uh, tragic crash. There was a meeting with the four teams, a, a dinner, if you will, that was closed off. RJ and I were lucky enough to host that, and Bathurst was the first to present him with a jersey, which I uh, still hold as one of my dearest memories of that event for sure. So a classy organization led by a classy coach, and obviously had a lot of classy players much like yourself listen it's been a real pleasure watching through your junior career as short as it was it's been a pleasure watching in the national hockey league and i want to wish you the very best with the new york islanders here uh, moving forward unbelievable player unbelievable person um, job well done and congratulations on what you've done this far congratulations on two memorial cup wins thank you sam it's always a pleasure Noah Dobson of the Acadie Bathurst Teton in 2018, the Ruin Naranda Huskies of 2019, two-time Memorial Cup champ, NHL defenseman with the New York Islanders.